Hello everybody and welcome back to another not applicable Formula 1 video. I hope that you're well. I hope you're enjoying testing. We're finally seeing 2022 cars actually on the grid and actually driving around a circuit. It seems crazy to me. I'm so incredibly excited for the 2022 season and it finally feels like it is just around the corner. And because of that, I thought what we'd do today is talk about the end of the turbo hybrid era. It's been 2014 to 2021 and I know the engines aren't changing, but 2022 seems like a really big turning point for Formula One. We had 157 races between 2014 and 2021 and only 11 different race winners and that's what I thought we'd do today is we'd rank those 11 race winners over the course of the turbo hybrid era from all different countries across the globe and we'll sort of see who was the best driver in the turbo hybrid era. So starting down at 11th and working our way up. I've got Esteban Ocon in at 11th place with the Alpine win in Hungary 2021. The actual most recent entry to this list of race winners. And what a win it was, by the way. An incredible drive from Esteban Ocon. And coming 11th in this list is no, you know, qualms against Esteban Ocon. I really like him. I think he's very, very good. But in comparison to some of the drivers we're going to talk about a little bit later on in this video... I think you'll understand why I've popped him in at 11th place. Similarly, with Pierre Gasly, who I've popped in at 10th place, got a win back in 2019 at Monza. Obviously, during that really turbulent time for him where he was in the Red Bull and then got moved back to the Alpha Tauri. And since he's been back at the Alpha Tauri, he has been absolutely phenomenal. But what a race this was, by the way. It was incredible to see. Hamilton obviously got penalised, we had safety cars and then we had a real dash to the line between a McLaren of Carlos Sainz and an Alpha Tauri of Pierre Gasly. What a race it was. Monza always delivers but Pierre Gasly with his one win during this era. I'm going to slot in at 10th place. 9th place actually goes to Sergio Perez. Two wins during the turbo hybrid era. Bahrain in 2020 and what a win that was as well. Like I know that these guys down here with just one or two wins, they really, really mean a lot to them. And they really stand out, I think, in Formula One fans' memories because Sergio Perez has just been a stalwart of Formula One. Like, he is ingrained in Formula One at this point and I think is one of those drivers that does define this era for me. When I look back at 2014 to 2021, even in 10, 20 years' time, I think Sergio Perez is one of those drivers that's really going to stand out for me. He always managed to do something a little bit special in the cars that he was in and just rounding out his career at sort of Force India slash Racing Point with that win was so, so nice to see. And obviously then got that move to Red Bull, managed to pick up a win in Baku as well, picking up his second win of his Formula One career and honestly is just synonymous with this era. And I did have him placed a little bit higher than ninth when I first did this list and then I kind of reshuffled it and I know that there's going to be a bit of debate because I put Pierre Gasly just behind him but for me Sergio Perez in terms of this era is just a little bit better than Pierre Gasly. Is he going to be better than Pierre Gasly over the course of Pierre Gasly's career? I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments down below. In eighth place, a very controversial pick, I think. <laughs> I put Valtteri Bottas. Now, there's a lot of wins here. He's got 10 wins in 157 Grand Prix. So almost 1 16th of the races he's managed to go on and win. And you know what? Maybe I should have had him a little bit higher up. But two wins per year over his five years at Mercedes just doesn't resonate with me it doesn't like click I feel like there should have been so many more wins for Valtteri Bottas over that era that he had at Mercedes five years in the fastest car on the grid by an absolute mile and only managed to get 10 wins I don't I'm saying only managed to get 10 wins 10 wins is absolutely phenomenal but at the same time it's not as many as some of the other drivers that are going to come up later on in this list and I know Toto Wolf recently came out and said that there was no second driver at Mercedes. And let's be real, Toto, there definitely was. I know that Valtteri Bottas started the year on level points with Lewis Hamilton. But as the seasons progressed and as Hamilton continued to win races upon races and World Championship upon World Championship, Valtteri Bottas kind of just looked more and more like a second driver and less and less like he was ever really going to put up a fight with Lewis Hamilton. So I've dropped him down into eighth place, which is probably quite controversial because he won 10 races and Charles Leclerc only won two. And I've got him up in seventh 
seventh place in my rankings. Could have actually been higher, in my opinion, but only came into Formula One in 2018. So it was kind of late to the turbo hybrid era compared to some of these other drivers. An insane season at Alfa Romeo to start it off. Moved to Ferrari and just instantly looked like he was going to be the future of Ferrari. Looked so good in that red car. And Ferrari gave him that insane contract. And two wins in 2019 just kind of reassured us of the quality that Charles Leclerc has. Obviously, he was beside Sebastian Vettel at the time. Sebastian Vettel was looking like he could sort of get up there towards world championships we'll talk about him in a little while but Charles Leclerc really held his own and then obviously towards the end of that career with Vettel as his teammate really started to stand out and just show that he has got absolute pace in bags and I think coming into the end of the turbo hybrid era winning those couple of races just makes us look forward to Charles Leclerc that little bit more like I really, really am excited to see if Charles Leclerc can make a step up in 2022. He's now part of the best duo on the grid, in my opinion, in him and Carlos Sainz. And I'm so, so excited to see what those two can do together, actually, in that Ferrari car this year. Talking a little bit about Ferrari, I've also put Kimi Raikkonen in at sixth place. He had five years at Ferrari off the back of two years in Lotus. And maybe I'm being a little bit kind to Kimi Raikkonen here in that he only managed to get one win in that Ferrari car. And yes, I do absolutely love Kimi Raikkonen for those years in Lotus, but they were just before the turbo hybrid era. So technically we're looking at his Ferrari and Alfa Romeo career here. And I'm just really going to miss Kimi Raikkonen. Five years at Ferrari, just did incredibly well. Came third, came fourth a couple of times, came sixth as well. And I'm, I'm surprised that in and amongst that, he only managed to get one win. Because coming third in the championship and only managing to get one win is kind of a little bit strange, to be honest. And it's, it's a shame that, you know, maybe he stayed a year too long, in my opinion. I think that last year at Alfa Romeo, or even the last three years at Alfa Romeo, have kind of been him winding down his career. And there's another driver that's going to come up a little bit later that left us wanting more. I don't think Kimi Raikkonen left us wanting more. I think Kimi Raikkonen left at probably a little bit too late, in my opinion, but still an absolutely phenomenal driver and managed to get at least one win in that turbo hybrid era to put his name again in the history books a world champion and a wonderful wonderful driver and i don't think we'll ever see anyone like him in formula one ever again daniel ricardo i've got in the top five though starting off this era daniel ricardo was just moving up into red bull in 2014 he finally got that step up into the big red bull team managed to get three wins a third place finish also managed to get third place in 2016 and is another one of those drivers a bit like Kimi Räikkönen, as i just mentioned that coming third in this era where mercedes was so incredibly dominant is very very impressive like no one was getting anywhere near the mercedes and therefore third is kind of best of everyone else, best outside of Mercedes and would have been world champion if it wasn't just for Mercedes relentlessness during this era. Then obviously saw 17 and 18, Max Verstappen was thrust into the Red Bull team a little bit more and it looked like Verstappen was going to become the future of Red Bull like we've seen over the last couple of seasons or so. And I think Daniel Ricciardo made his mind up that if he wasn't going to be the clear number one in a team, he was going to go somewhere where he could be. Went to Renault. He was poor for the first season in Renault, then very good for the second season at Renault. And again, now has moved to McLaren. Overall, you'd say it's a pretty poor season, but did manage to get that win in a McLaren. So can't really complain. Eight wins over the course of the turbo hybrid era for Daniel Ricciardo. Could have been a world driver's champion if it hadn't have been for Mercedes just being absolutely tyrants in Formula One and similar for this guy as well Sebastian Vettel I've got in at fourth place here and I think this could be one of the controversial ones because did it over so many seasons at Ferrari obviously started the era with a fifth place championship in a Red Bull and was trying to find that fifth in a row right he was coming off the back of winning four world drivers championships and started this new era in Red Bull, didn't quite work out for him in that first year and therefore got that move to Ferrari. And it was so close to being the perfect story with him and Ferrari, wasn't it? It was so incredibly close for that Ferrari stint just being 
absolutely sensational. Like taking the place of Schumacher, obviously a German driver back in the red of Ferrari. He was, you know, stepping into the footsteps of his idol and it just so incredibly close to winning those championships, so incredibly close to putting Ferrari back on that top step of the grid, but it just wasn't quite. Like, he got a fifth place, a third place, and then a fourth place, and then obviously in 17 and 18, two second places behind Lewis Hamilton. Like, he was just so close with that Ferrari, and even getting second place, I know Valtteri Bottas was new to the team in 2017 and 2018, but beating them getting so close to beating Lewis Hamilton and actually putting up a real fight for the championship is something that we didn't see from many other drivers with Lewis Hamilton other than Verstappen last year, you would say. So the fact that Vettel wasn't quite able to do it, managed to get 11 wins over the course of that sort of seasons in Ferrari. And yeah, it was just so close to being the perfect story, wasn't it? Imagine if he'd have got those two World Drivers Championships and we were looking at a six-time world champion, two with Ferrari. I think, you know, those final couple of seasons with Ferrari really didn't go the way he wanted them to. A 13th place before he moved to Aston Martin last year. And, you know, we've definitely seen maybe the decline of Vettel now. I think we're never going to see Vettel right back up there at the top step of the grid, but... The fact he was so close and the fact that he pushed Hamilton so far, I really do respect him for that. And that's why I've put him so high up in this. I put him in fourth place just behind his national sort of compatriot in Nico Rosberg. I've put in third place and maybe a little bit high here. This is where I think there's a bit of debate. I've changed this so many times over the course of making this video and rewatching these races. But Nico Rosberg joined Formula One in 2005 and had to wait bide his time like he was in the middle of the pack for a very very long time a lot of top 10 finishes but never really you know getting up towards those top three or top two or even a world championship behind him you know he was just waiting I feel like for the right time for him and managed to get into the Mercedes team just before the turbo hybrid era started and then just 2014 clicked he just became an absolute phenomenon in that Mercedes car and yes it was by far and away the fastest car on the grid but he was fighting Lewis Hamilton who we now know has gone on to be a seven-time world champion and the battles between those two are just synonymous with this era for me I know it was only the first the, th the first three years before he then went on to win that world championship but the first win he got in 2012 just before the era started then two more in 2013 and really built up to that 2014 five wins a second place finish 2015 six wins a second place finish and then 2016 that championship year nine wins he was able to grab in that season so 20 wins over the course of the turbo hybrid era for him in that Mercedes car and he was only here for those first three seasons and honestly like until last year he was the only driver that really pushed Lewis Hamilton to the final Grand Prix to the real edge of of getting towards beating Lewis Hamilton and obviously was one of the only two drivers that was able to overcome Lewis Hamilton and win a world championship and gave us some incredible seasons and some incredible moments in the Mercedes car as well. Just a phenomenal driver and I absolutely love Nico Rosberg and Honestly, I just wish he would have stayed. I know he left for the right reasons. He left for his family. He left because he'd won that world championship and that was what he really wanted to do. And he had been in Formula One a very long time. He joined in 2005 as a test driver. So I can understand why he wanted to move on to other things. But at the same time, just imagine if he'd have stayed. These storylines we'd have had at Mercedes, the fact that would he have been able to go back to back world championships, would he have been able to push Lewis Hamilton even further and maybe take a few of those world championships off of him. Maybe even, you know, with Vettel being in the pack, Vettel might have been able to sneak the world championship in there because Nico Rosberg might have taken some points off Lewis Hamilton and vice versa. And obviously we saw those two collide as well. But I guess it's always better to leave wanting more and Nico Rosberg definitely left us all wanting a little bit more from him but I completely understand why he moved. Second place then and we're getting up to the top two. I've got Max Verstappen in second place in this rankings for me. 20 wins as well so the same as Nico Rosberg in terms of wins and 
our current world champion. And the only reason I'm going to put him above Nico Rosberg for me, I think Nico Rosberg has given us more storylines, or at least for me, I just remember Nico Rosberg and that Mercedes era just being so incredibly fun to watch. I think Max Verstappen is the future. Our current world champion obviously finally thwarted Mercedes as well. So between uh, 2014 and 2021, they're the only other constructor that has managed to win a world drivers championship. They didn't even manage to win the constructors championship off of Mercedes, but at least they managed to get one trophy off of Mercedes from this era. And Max Verstappen was the one who did it. Obviously won his first race back in 2016, just aged 18 years old in Spain, and then came fifth overall that year and never looked back, just looked to spring forward. And as I said, when I was talking about Daniel Ricciardo, Red Bull really put all their eggs in the Max Verstappen shaped basket, and it finally paid off in 2021. You know, Hambot Ver became a little bit of an annoyance, became a bit of a staple at the front of the grid, and lots of people were a little bit frustrated that it was maybe becoming a little bit boring. But this year, or last year, I should say, definitely, you know, repaid us for a little bit of those couple of boring seasons because it was absolutely sensational. One of the best seasons you are ever going to see in Formula One. And then top of the tree, ranked in first place, Lewis Hamilton, 81 wins in 157 races. He won 51% of all the races in this entire uh, turbo hybrid era. What? How? What? He's just a phenomenon. And I know he was in the best car for the majority of it. And I know he didn't really have to beat out that many competitors over the course of some of those seasons. And that's where he picked up lots and loads of those wins. But becoming a centurion in poles, a centurion in wins, seven times a world driver's champion and still at the top of his game. It's fair to say that he's been all right during the turbo hybrid era. It's been pretty good for Lewis Hamilton. And we're ranking these 11 drivers. When I started doing this script, I was like, Lewis Hamilton just goes in at one. Like, he was the first driver I just put in. There was no argument for me, for anyone else getting anywhere close to Lewis Hamilton in this list. Like, 81 wins is literally more than everybody else combined on this list. That's insane. That is absolutely insane to me. And the fact that he's still at the top of his game is also just mind-boggling to me. You know, the fact that he is still fighting for World Drivers' Championships. We saw last year he was within a lap of winning a World Drivers' Championship. And we've seen drivers come and go over this era. We've seen drivers hit their peak and drop off. We've seen drivers, you know, coming into the sport. Max Verstappen and Charles Leclerc we've talked about. And the fact that maybe their best years are still ahead of them. Lewis Hamilton just seems relentless he just seems constant and I don't know when we're gonna see Lewis Hamilton actually drop off because it looks like 2022 could be another year where we see Lewis Hamilton properly fighting at the top of the grid if Mercedes can deliver him that car and for me Hamilton just persists I know Verstappen beat him out I know that Rosberg beat him in there as well but Hamilton was just the constant it was unrelenting it was win after win after win it was pole after pole after pole and undoubtedly top of the tree for me but that's just my opinion I'd love to know your thoughts the 11 drivers here that have all won races in this turbo hybrid era how would you rank them from 11th to first and I'd love to know your opinions like Charles Leclerc I changed a couple of times in my rankings Sebastian Vettel and Nico Rosberg I had the other way around as well as Max Verstappen, it felt a little bit harsh to maybe drop Rosberg behind Verstappen. But then Rosberg was only there for three years. It's very, very complicated. And I'm sure I'll change my mind even after I put this video out, to be honest with you. But that's just my thoughts at the time. I'd love to know yours in the comments down below. Thank you so, so much for watching. I will see you next time. Oh my goodness me. We've got testing and 2022 is just around the corner. I cannot wait.